This is for anyone who's interested in how to get power from something other than an outlet or on-grid source. There are external battery packs and a fantastic method to charge your phone and other fragile electronics. This one here requires you to charge it before use, but you can also get a solar-powered one like this, which will charge in the sunlight. All of these will last one to five days, contingent on how much you use it. You can also use a generator, but it's loud. However, it's the best option for keeping things like freezers running to save your food if the power goes out. I've also used battery chargers before like this. When I lived in the truck and camper in the woods, it was completely off grid. The camper had electricity to it. The guy said it was broken and I didn't know how to fix it. And I was on a deadline to move out. So I just never did. Instead, I used all these things that I just placed on the table here. Plus this battery converter pack right here that I'm showing you the 410 watt. You just hook it up to your battery. Positive is red, negative is black, and um, it will convert the energy from the battery so that it's safe for your electronics to take in. Battery operated light sources are also an option. In areas like where I live during the summer, power companies perform PSPSs, public power safety shutoffs, because they are now being held liable for fires caused by their power lines if they keep them running during times of high fire danger. High fire danger includes times of active burn paired with east wind events. These are winds coming in from the east that can get up to 65 plus miles an hour, will drop trees onto power lines, take out poles, and spread active burns from a few hundred acres to thousands of acres. The only option for power companies to keep people safe is to shut the power off. In the winter, the area that I live has a lot of tree coverage and can suffer severe snow, rainfall, and more wind events, which obviously take out power lines as well. They stay inoperable until someone can get out there to fix it. A lot of homes in the area, mine included, get overloaded on their circuit easily because the older electrical system is not built for using a high power load caused by appliances. It's not a reliable power source and it can damage the wiring. One of the ways to get around that is to do as many things manually as possible if too many lights are already running. Many folks in these areas are without running water, heat, or electricity when the power shuts off and have off-grid options at their disposal. When I lived in a truck and camper without electricity, this is how I made my coffee. It's good to know how to do things without electricity electricity regardless. There may be a day where you need to use these skills or you want to use these skills but you don't know how. It's a matter of showing how to be self-sufficient.